What up, gang? This Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, and Villain Filling Trilligan, and we are back on Tsukihime. Last episode, it was confirmed that Seal is with the church and was supposed to be working with Arukai to take out the vampire, but, you know, they just got beef and shit because, you know, Seal is racist. We're work right, right now we're working. We found out that Chaos was not actually the vampire that Arukai was looking for. So now we're working with Arakai to take bro to, to find him and kill him. So let's get into it. We're in chapter seven, bow in the sky too. I'm watching a dream, a vague dream without any particular significance. Do I like her? I don't know my true feelings, but I can't deny the reality that I'm always concerned about her. Do I like her? I don't know. It's just that when I was completely lost within myself, she helped me. If she wasn't there, I may have just died under the pouring rain. I don't know. That's why I have to ask. Why she, why she is doing this? Why her eyes are so devoid of any emotion? Shiki. I can hear Hisui's voice mingling with the morning light. Shiki, it is time. Please wake up. Her inflection his voice awakens me. Oh, his glasses are off. Oh, shit. Put them bitches back on, bro. As soon as I wake up, terrible things enter my vision. I get a headache like I was just shot in the head. Ah, shit. I almost just I almost lose my just awakened consciousness. Before I fade away completely, I quickly grab my glasses. Shiki, are you not feeling well? No, that's not it. It's just my anemia acting up. Lightly shaking my head, I clear my head of what I was seeing. More than that, good morning, Isui. Thanks for waking me up. Sitting up in bed, I do my best to smile naturally. No, this is my duty. There is no need for you to thank me, Shiki. Maybe, but I am grateful. You are infinitely better than an alarm clock. I stand up. It's not yet 7 o'clock, about 10 minutes earlier than I usually get up. Huh, breakfast. I'll be there soon, so please go ahead of me. Shiki, about that, um, Akiha is waiting for you in the sitting room. It seems she has some questions for you. Hisui says this with some difficulty. Some things she needs to ask. She in a bad mood? Yes. Akia seems to have realized that you left late last night, Shiki. Ah, uh, shit. I blurt that out without thinking. Last night I went to look for Arukai and came home late. Ah, uh, damn, I thought nobody noticed. Yes, I also thought I was the only one who noticed. Hisui answered solemnly. Hisui, you realize that I left? You didn't realize that yourself? It was pretty freaking obvious. It's pretty. It was pretty obvious that she knew. Oh, Hisui looks very apologetic. I see. You knew. No wonder the ancient's interest was open. Yes. Hisui answers reluctantly. Thanks, it was a big help. And thanks for going out of your way to do that. But Nay realized because of that too. Oh, but Nason realized too because of that. Nason and I have a two hour shift watching the mansion. And she found out about me unlocking the entrance. I see. Kohaku is Akiha's servant, so she would have leaked it to Akiha about last night. Kisui, there's no need to apologize. It was my fault that I was walking around that night, so I should take the blame. I'm still very happy that you left the door unlocked. Kisui just looks at me. Huh? It is nothing. As soon as you change, please go to the sitting room. Still looking like she wants to say something. Hisui exits into the hallway. Dang! I'm gonna get scolded by Akiha again. I mutter to myself as I change. If I have time for that, there's still something important I have to do instead. That's right, I have to talk to Senpai. Who is knocking on my door? Oh, headache, my fault. Dang, somebody's knocking on the door to my brain! I get the headache again. It faded when I was talking to Hisui, but as soon as she left, it started hurting again. Ah, crap, this doesn't look good. Looks like it'll end soon. I bear the pain and collapse on the bed. 
It doesn't ease up. Throb, throb. A pain like I'm being stabbed in the head. It makes me completely forget what I was thinking about earlier. Come to think of it, in the eight years since that accident, I've always had to deal with my broken body. Dizziness, headaches, and anemia occurring unexpectedly. I can't count how many things I had to give up because of that. The doctor said it was a miracle just surviving it. Just being able to live is a miracle, so putting up with various pains is perhaps necessary. These broken eyes. Sensei, who was able to alleviate these eyes, told me to treat that miracle very importantly. Those words. Does she mean that human night life is not so much precious as it is not returnable? So I should treat it carefully? These past few days, I've seen the deaths of many people too easily. Lives ending so easily, it's almost comical. If, that is, if it is something that ends so easily, doesn't it mean that it was only worth that much from the beginning? If that's the case, it's meaningless to view life as precious. Huh? Why? Since when am I? did you start thinking like that? Uh, headache finally starts. He's bipolar. He's got multiple personalities. Why? Like, why is he talking about himself and then talking to himself? That's strange. Shaky, you're weird. Uh, the headache finally stops. Maybe I saw too much blood. What a horrible thought. I take a deep breath, deep breath. Filling my lungs with fresh air, I clear away the unpleasantness. I should hurry up and go to school. I should go and see Sheil. Enduring the slight pain lingering in my head, I leave my room. I go down the stairs and into the lobby. Next to me. <sighs> Next to me is the hallway that goes down toward the sitting room. In front of me is the front door that leads outside. What should I do? Akiha is waiting in the sitting room, but I want to hurry up and see Senpai. We got to go to the sitting room, bro. Like, we did sneak out late last night. We we, we are wrong for doing that, right? We like, you know, we, we, we snuck out without saying nothing. We are wrong for that. We should at very least do the right thing and speak with Akiha. Nah. But still, I can't ignore Akiha and go right to school. I want to find out about Senpai right away, but first I should explain to Akiha about last night. What are you going to explain to her? Akiha is the only one in the sitting room. Kahaku was in the kitchen humming away. Oh, she is mad. Akiha doesn't say anything when she sees me and sips her tea quietly. She thinks she XXX Tentacion. Good morning, Akiha. Resisting the urge to go to school, I greet her as naturally as possible. Akiha's eyebrow twitches as she places her teacup and slowly looks at me. Good morning. It was quite late when you came home last night, wasn't it? No, not really. It was at most a little past one o'clock. Quite normal for a healthy young man in high school to be up, right? I see. My bedtime is also past midnight, so I was up at that time. But I would come home much earlier than that. Yeah, even if I was home early, yeah, even I was home earlier, wasn't I? I just had something to do, so I was out for a little bit. Without permission? You acted like you were out doing something you felt guilty over. Uh, her stare is pure ice. This is the second time, and I'm sure even though Akiha looks calm, she is quite angry. Nissan, I don't know what went on in the, I don't know what went on at the Arima house, but here the curfew was eight o'clock. It is a rule that must not be broken. The gate will be locked after that, so please don't climb in like a robber. Oh, you knew. The surveillance camera showed me quite clearly. It is a good thing Kohaku realized it was you and turned off the alarm system, because otherwise you would have been you would probably be detained right now, Tono Shiki. Oh. Well, I should thank Kohaku then. And uh Akiha, my apologies. I shouldn't have kept quiet about it. If you understand, then it is fine. Please make sure you observe your curfew from now on. I will look over, I will overlook it this time. About that. What is it? This is a little hard to say. I have something to do tonight too. 
I don't know when I'm going to be back, but I'm not going to do anything bad. Her gaze sharpens. Kohaku! She suddenly stands up. Kohaku comes in from the kitchen. They're about to jump me. Yes, what is it, my lady? I will be going to school. Get the preparations ready. Huh? But I have not yet made shaky breakfast. You can leave this person alone. It seems he can do everything by himself. Akiha strides towards the lobby. Kohaku sighs. Shiki, you should not make Akiha so upset. You are her big brother, so treat her better, okay? Saying that, she walks after Akiha. The teacup sits, still steaming. Oh my goodness. I know it's my own fault, but I won't have any breakfast today. But it is convenient in a way. It is now just 7 o'clock. If I, if I run to school now, I should be able to get there, get there around half past 7. I make it to the gate. It's about half past seven, just as I said. I stand and wait for Senpai by the gate. It probably looks a little strange to the other students walking by, but I don't really care. Senpai? Senpai? Oh, I was about to say, what happened? Senpai doesn't show up. The school gate is flooded with students as they arrive. It's still only five minutes before the gate closes, but Senpai still does not come. She might not come today. Yesterday I saw that happen, so she might not come today or tomorrow or the day I... Thump. Ah. Thinking that, I feel a little faint. I shake my head to clear off those terrible thoughts. And then someone pats me on the shoulder from behind. Oh no, what are you doing here? Senpai. Yes. Senpai nods. R really? But but yesterday you were Huh. Before I can finish, Senpai puts her hand over my mouth. Tono, shut up. Let's go behind the gymnasium. I'll bounce on it for you. Just make sure you stay quiet. Uh, wait, no, let's go behind the gymnasium. Senpai gives her usual smile as she keeps her hand over my mouth and pulls my arm. This feels so awkward without music. Give me back my music. And pulls my arm. Ugh. I try to tell her to stop, but I can't speak. She forcefully pulls me away. Thank you for the music, but maybe I sh <laughs> Hurt my ears. The school bell rings overhead. Homeroom has begun. Furthermore, no one else is around. Yes, no one can hear us here. Senpai finally releases me. Jumping back, I face Senpai directly. You want to talk about last night, right? If there's anything you want to say, please go ahead. Senpai speaks calmly, as if what happened last night was not a big deal. But it was a big deal for me. Her attitude right now is pissing me off. So that really was you last night. Yes, I did say your name back then too, so it's impossible to hide it any longer. I thought she had a twin sister or something. I grit my teeth. I didn't expect an apology or anything, but still. But, but you said that wasn't you. What was it? Three nights ago, I asked if you were the one that helped me that night in the park. You said it wasn't you. That was a lie. Su succinct succinctly senpai simply says so a lie i lied for your sake tono i have to seal the mouth of any ordinary person who finds out my true identity tono you don't like pain right senpai says it's an unbelievable thing with a rather bright smile with a rather bright and cheerful voice seal the mouth uh to put it simply dead people can't talk um I think I put it too simply. Ah. Uh, I step back without even thinking about it. Senpai sounds like she's only half joking. So I cannot let you go free depending on what you tell me. Tono, just what is your connection with that woman? My heart almost stops as those emotionless eyes stare at me. I thought I would be asking the questions, but our positions have been reversed. 
but I don't know what senpai would do if I don't answer and a chill runs through me. Ah, no, that's not it. About last night, I thought Arakai was the one- Oh! Oh, no, that's not it. About last night, I thought Arakai was the one behind the serial killing, but that couldn't be right. So I went to ask her and I tell her all about last night. Senpai listens to it all silently. How I met her accidentally. How she explained to me that the vampire in this city and how I teamed up with her to save the city and everything up until now. I understand. So you teamed up with her to defeat the vampire in the city, right Tana? Well, yeah, that's how it is. I can't believe it. Tono, do you really believe in vampires? Th yes, I saw one with my own eyes. Oh my goodness. What are you talking about? Even you, you're one of the church to bleh, 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 bleh. Senpai puts a finger over my mouth. And then she puts a finger in my mouth. Don't worry about me. Isn't the problem more about you, Tono? Me? I don't have any problems. You have no self-awareness, it seems. Senpai gives a troubled sigh. I have a question, just how much did she tell you about? How much? Well, only that a vampire is in this city sucking people dry. So in other words, you don't know about her or this enemy she is after. Well, I haven't heard about it. I see. Then I'll tell you about it. Wow, that's amazing. You know about that, senpai? Well, you know, I am a member of the church, so of course I know that much. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I kind of forgot. <laughs> I attempt to laugh it off. Jeez, I'm trying to be serious here, so pay attention. I nod an assent. Huh? But isn't that a secret? Arakai, uh, she, she said you are all incredibly secretive. Yes, it really isn't something to talk about, but today is special. There isn't anyone watching over us or anything, so as long as you don't tell anyone, I, then it'll be okay. Um, what'll happen if I tell someone else about you, senpai? <laughs> yes. I'll just do exactly what you were thinking of, Tana. Senpai gives a frightening response with a smile. Well then, I'll keep it very simple. Tano, how much was explained to you about vampires? Just about how there are two types. Uh, dead apostles are vampires that suck human blood. But I think I know what kind of monsters they are. That's true. Tano, you did actually defeat a vampire. Ah, but you did help me at the very end, senpai. Yes, I watched you annihilate Chaos. When I came, Chaos was already dying, though. I'm surprised. And senpai knows about my eyes. It was terrible. That woman made you do such a thing. If she had a conceptual weapon to defeat Chaos, she should have used it herself. After seeing your bloody body, I thought I should punish her and then and there. You too, Tono. Even if you were given a weapon that can kill vampires, what were you thinking fighting that thing? Does she have a does she have a hold over your weakness or something? Still looking surprised, Senpai complains aloud. Um, Senpai, what's this weapon that can kill vampires? What do you mean? I'm talking about that knife you have, Tona. Oh, I guess she wouldn't tell you about it. It's not good for her either. Let's see. Vampires have the ability to recover from most injuries they receive. With ordinary outside force, I mean, ordin normal weapons. With such things, you cannot cause wounds greater than the speed of their recovery. To kill a vampire, you need an outside force greater than their speed of recovery, or something that nullifies their ability to recover. This ability of theirs, the, the curse of restoration, actually isn't treating the wound. Instead, it's reversing the time to restore the damaged body part back to its original state. An occult artifact which nullifies this effect is called a conceptual weapon. Senpai cheerfully says all these things that I do not understand. I don't understand either. What is she on about? In short, a magical weapon. Okay, that makes sense. We usually lift their curse looking into their human past, so we do not usually use them. But for those that were not originally human, we use them, kind of like a secret weapon. Your knife, is it not an anti-vampire weapon she brought? Ah, uh... Or is it a family treasure? 
Hmm, but it would be strange for the Tono family to possess an anti-demon weapon. Senpai ponders aloud. I don't know what she's thinking, but it seems she has no idea about my eyes. She might be stupid. Um, Senpai, where did our conversation about vampires go? With a start, Senpai stops mumbling to herself. She smiles as if to hide her embarrassment. As usual, her personality is hard to understand. Let's get back to the main subject. Please, listen carefully, Tono. Yes, please, keep it short. It seems you already know about how there are true ancestors in the dead apostles. So it is very simple. The enemy she is after is a dead apostle named the Serpent. Among the dead apostles, he is considered heretic, a social, a special vampire, a heretic, a special vampire. This vampire is not as strong as Chaos whom you defeated, but he is more difficult an opponent to eliminate than this Chaos in a way, since he comes back to life even after he dies. Uh, Senpai, vampires are immortal, so isn't it natural for them to come back to life after dying? You eliminated Chaos, right? Even if they are vampires, if you destroy their body and soul, they will be vanquished. If you kill a vampire, they will die. But the serpent is a vampire who has conquered even this. Tono, are you familiar with the cycle of reincarnation? It is part of Buddhist doctrine, so I would think the Japanese would be quite familiar with it. Yeah. It's that thing where when someone dies, they're reborn again as another human. Yes, exactly. In other words, the vampire named the serpent has made a cycle of reincarnation his own. That's what I mean when I say he comes back to life even after he's killed. Reincarnation? You mean if he dies, he'll start over again as a baby? Yes. While the serpent is alive, he chooses his next host. And when it is born, he transmits all of the information of itself. The serpent's information stays deep within the body, within the baby until it matures, or until it gains sufficient intelligence. As soon as that baby has the intelligence to succeed himself, the baby becomes a new vampire that is a serpent. Wait a minute. What's that? Don't tell me he does surgery on it while it's still in the mother or something like that. No, it's not anything medical. Because the instant the body is destroyed, he reincarnates into the body he chose as his next host. I said all of his information earlier, but to say it simpler, think of it as his soul. It wouldn't be quite correct to say his soul propagates through the air and takes over someone's body, but it's similar to an electromagnetic wave. In this case, the human brain is what does the transmitting and the receiving. His exceptional point is that he took the soul, which is incalculable, and something that disperses as soon as it leaves the envelope of the body, and processes it as something that can be transmitted. Wowza! Her words don't seem quite real. I'm starting to think she's a little cuckoo for coconuts in her head. I do understand what she's saying though. The ser this, this serpent guy is reborn as a baby when he dies and his baby turns into a serpent vampire when it becomes an adult. But if I believe your story, it means he will never die. It's not immortality, it's worse than that. Being killed and, and reborn as someone else, that's like living forever. Yes, exactly. It was 800 years ago when the serpent first became a dead apostle. Since then, the serpent has been reborn 17 times. Every time, Arukai Brunstad has killed him. Arukai did. Yes. To her, the serpent is a special vampire. Well, the serpent has a special meaning to me as well. But even if he dies, he'll just be reborn, right? So killing him over and over is pointless, isn't it? Yes. He's killed by her, reincarnates, and is killed by her again. That cycle has repeated itself over and over. If Arakai had the power to kill not the body, but the meaning, then this, would, this probably would not be happening. Senpai looks down a little and she seems to be gritting her teeth. That's where we come in! Hey, hey. We see death, uh, you feel me? So we gonna, we gonna pull up on the serpent, right? And you know how you kill a snake. You cut the head off. We gonna pull up on the serpent. We gonna cut his head off. And then he gonna be thinking like, while he's dying, he gonna be thinking like, dang, man. That's wicked. 
but like I'm just going to reincarnate. But he's not gonna realize like we got the magic eyes. So like when we kill him, he's not coming back. He ain't coming back. He's not willing him after. He does not always come back. Not when we're a factor that's introduced into the battle. Not hold on, not when we're a factor introduced to the equation. Hold on. Hold on, that, that goes harder, that goes hard. I don't know why. However, it seems that Senpai also holds some grudge against the enemy like Arakai does. A vampire that's reborn every time it's killed. That's Arakai and Senpai's enemy. Senpai! This serpent guy, what kind of guy is he? He was originally a man, but that can change depending on the body he reincarnates into. The troublesome part of his dead apostle is that they're all hard to find. Because he's properly born as a human baby and has parents, the serpent transforms into a vampire only when he reaches the age where he can do everything at a satisfactory level. Until then, that human shows no hint of being a vampire. But once the serpent awakens, he uses the relationship he gained until then, until that time to blend perfectly into society. I heard that the church detects a serpent's presence usually after a whole town is turned into the dead. I see. For example, if this serpent god were reincarnated in me, he would live as Tono Shiki even after he becomes a serpent. Unless he makes a big mistake, he would be free to suck blood without people realizing it. That is... Kinda scary! Of course, those around him are in danger too. But that human whom he reincarnated into, well, he would just disappear after maturing, right? One moment that person is living normally, and the next moment he suddenly turns into the serpent. That's frightening. Yes, but it isn't like two people sharing one body. The human baby is still the serpent. Depending on its environment, it's either a good or bad person. But even that disappears the instant the serpent awakens. To sum it up, the serpent dies and is reborn into the next body. And once that body gains intelligence, it gains the previous life self and becomes a vampire. We might have to take care of the serpent guy. That's strange. Even if he did reincarnate, that baby is still human. So even if it does gain the self of a previous life, the body shouldn't turn into a vampire, right? Reincarnation isn't transmitting a personality, it is a transmission of a soul. So the personality differs every time depending on their families and upbringings. But the soul itself does not change. Once bitten by a true ancestor, not only is the body forever soiled, but the soul as well. What changes the body is the soul. The serpent transmits all of his information called his soul. So when the serpent awakens, the body becomes one of a vampire, but yeah, but as you said, just that is too weak. So he selects the next host while he's alive. The family he's born into must meet two conditions. The first being one of wealth. Being born in a family of high social standing, property, and money makes it easier to make the whole town into vampires later on. And there is another. This is the most important one. But amongst normal people like us, there are also people that carry special powers. Not like magic, which is a mystic power that can be learned, but rather special abilities from birth. Such people are normally called demonic children and psychics. These special abilities are genetic, as they are inherited, passed on by blood. He chooses these families that have something not human in their lineages. A family with wealth and influence and inhuman power. Those are the requirements for his host. We meet both requirements. I'm a little on the scared side here. We might just be the serpent. You know, we might just be the serpent. This serpent vampire, he seems to be quite prepared. Yes, yeah, since he is a serpent, he has a very slithering intellect. Caught that. There's something wrong. Something about this story I don't like. Tona? That was just a joke, but are you listening? Uh, yeah, it wasn't very funny. <laughs> Why'd you say that? <laughs> Well, she's sad now. Why did you say that? <laughs> Senpai goes quiet. I really don't feel like laughing right now. Why do I suddenly feel so down? But I understand now. That's our enemy, right, Senpai? No. 
Arokai Brunstud. Arokai Brunstud's and my enemy. There's no need for you to worry about the serpent, Tono. So please, don't go with Arokai any longer. Either I or that woman will destroy him. There's no need for you to face any danger. Danger, look. Isn't just living in a city dangerous enough? You, even Arakai, is fighting to protect the city. So I can't overlook this either. No. She isn't thinking about this city. She's only after the serpent for her own reasons. Tono, the dead apostles were once human. There are two ways for them to become vampires. Either they would have their blood sucked by the true ancestors, who were originally born as vampires, or they changed their own bodies through their magical research and their quest for immortality. The serpent had his blood sucked by a true ancestor to become a dead apostle. Do you understand? The serpent is a victim of the true ancestors, a race beyond ours. Senpai stares at me. Those emotionless eyes tell me what she's going to say next. Don't tell me that true ancestor was. Arakai Brunstad. The royalty of the true ancestors who made her only mistake 800 years ago. She is the one who made the true serpent made the serpent, my fault. From the very beginning, the true ancestors were in existence far separated from ours. The dead apostles certainly were vampires that wield immense ability, but that ability is only an extension of human capacity. Because they have managed to attain a long life, they are able to develop their abilities and manage to refine it to those super abilities as a result. In other words, anyone can develop abilities equal to the vampires if they have a long, if they have a long time. Yeah, I think I've read that somewhere. They say immortality, but being a vampire isn't something that great. But the true ancestors are different. From the moment they're born, they possess power beyond human comprehension. From the beginning, these true ancestors are in existence closer to the world of human, closer to the world than humans. We humans have flourished this much by isolating ourselves from nature. While we receive blessings from nature, we steal from it. And even if nature is destroyed, we will not be destroyed. We became the most superior race on this planet, probably because of this one sin that we humans carry. We can no longer be a part of nature. In its place, we have gained ways to destroy nature, this whole planet. However, from the nature's perspective, this is evil. The world itself is a form of life, so it has a will to protect itself from us. It does not have senses. So it creates a presence separated from nature like us to, re to remonstrate us. Senpai is weird. Nature doesn't have a will of its own. Yeah, it can't. But can it be that we just can't feel it? Nature, the earth, possesses a will. That's why it still exists and tries to stay beautiful. The problem isn't that we can't feel it. It's that the standard of what nature thinks is beautiful and the standard of what humans believe are beautiful are the same. An existence which the world creates a sense for. These are what we usually call spirits. They are transcendental species existing on another plane, different from the remaining spirits of animals in the, pr in the present world. The true ancestors are one of these type, one of these spirits, or one type of these spirits. They are born with the purpose to punish humans. So they only see humans as evil. Much as we think vampires who, are, who, prey among, who prey upon humans are evil, they view humans who prey upon nature as evil. If that's funny. Then why can't they exist unless they feed on us humans, the evil existence? Humans are only enemies to the true ancestors. As part of nature, no. As those whose powers are linked to nature itself, their power has no limits. In the long history of the church, there are only a few records of fighting against the true ancestors. They get their powers from the world itself. Therefore, in order to kill them, a conceptual, a conceptual weapon with the power to kill the world is needed. Of course, such a weapon does not exist. So that means their death cannot be caused by external factors. That night, she said in that hotel. If I had tried to kill her during nighttime, these eyes would not have even been able to see her death. In other words, it means she cannot die. Do you understand, Tono? 
Arakai Brunstead is pursuing the serpent in order to recover her power he took away from her. It's not for the sake of any humans. I don't know why she is weakened now, but if she regains her power, she will not need your help, Tono. When that happens, do you think she'll let you leave safely? Of course she would. She doesn't have a reason to hurt me. She's a vampire. She isn't like the dead apostles who suck blood in order to prolong their own life. Look, Tono. If the true ancestors didn't suck blood, vampires would never exist in the first place. They can survive without sucking human blood, but they still do suck blood because they have the urge to do so and make humans into an existence outside of human nature. I can't let some ordinary person like you be with her. Senpai's talk ends like that. It might be because of my dizziness, but it seems like everything she's talking about is totally unrelated to me. Tono, does that show you how dangerous she is? Yeah, well, I get the gist. So please, don't cooperate with her anymore, okay? I... I can't do that. I can't consent to what she's saying. Because she doesn't know Arakai. She doesn't know how good of a person she is. Tono! She groans. But even if she makes that face, I'm not about to just lie to myself. Sorry. I also have my reasons, so I want to help her. It's true that I don't know what she'll do if I turn against her. But it's also true that I just can't leave her alone. Please, don't say stupid crap. Tono, you're just a normal boy. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're just a normal boy, so you shouldn't do such dangerous things. I'm grateful for your concern, but there are some things that I want to protect if I can, such as this city and my peaceful time with you at school. Well, even though you ended up protecting me, <laughs> but it's just too dangerous. You were nearly dead when you fought with chaos. Isn't that all right? Besides, if Arokite is really that strong, shouldn't defeating this serpent vampire be simple? I'm telling you that she's the dangerous one. Please open your eyes already. She isn't human. You don't know when she'll suck blood. She is more of a monster than the dead apostles. What? All right. You're not about to talk about Arakai like that. Watch out, Sue. I know. I know that she's really worried about me, but I can't allow those words. Just shut up. She isn't a monster. You shouldn't say things. You shouldn't say those things when you haven't even talked to her. That is tr true. But she is a vampire. Please understand that. I think she's racist. <laughs> I think Seal is just racist, bro. <laughs> I mean, for good reason, I understand, because she's not wrong. Vampires wouldn't exist without true ancestors. So I was thinking this before, like, like we really got to start looking at the true ancestors because why are y'all making vampires in the first place if you're just going to kill them, right? So I do understand that she's not completely wrong, but like, can I be delusional for a second? Arakai is different. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Look, senpai, Arakai doesn't suck blood. She told me herself, and I don't think she's lying. I don't know how those other true ancestors are, but Arakai is different. Just her, she's definitely, bro, mad delusional. Mad delusional, but I'm, I'm also gonna say delusional too. Definitely what? Look, even if she isn't dangerous, it's dangerous enough for you to fight. You can't recover from injuries like she can. If you get wounded, you'll die. What I can't forgive is that she knows this and still lets you fight. It's like she's just seeing you as a tool, Tono. She screams this last part. I know. I understand she's right. But because I understand, her voice annoys me. Shut up. Dang, shut up. Oh no. Just shut up! Arakai doesn't see me as a tool at all. You don't know you don't know anything about her. You you just think she's some sort of monster, so you have no right to say that, racist! You 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 Ku Klux Klan member! Get out of my face! We we got a we got a Ku Klux Klan member. I'm I'm finna block this Ku Klux Klan member. <laughs> Please calm down. I know I don't know very much about her, but there is a possibility that she could be deceiving. Shut up! Weren't you the one deceiving me? Ah, uh, <laughs> she can't argue against that. 
Oh crap. Why did I... Why did I say that terrible thing? Senpai, I, uh, said too much, but I can't say it. Her expression looks very fragile. Looks like she's gonna break down the moment I say something. You're right, you know. You're right now that you mention it. Senpai? Yes, that's right. I have been deceiving you, Tono. So there's no reason for you to believe me. She suddenly smiles as if her previous expression never existed. There's no trace of it being faked, even though it has to be fake. I can't see anything but a true smile. I apologize for taking your time. Um, then I'll just disappear now. Huh? She just disappeared! The wind rushes by in that very instant. She just disappears! Dang. What did you do, bro? Oh my goodness. See now, Shinky. You pissed me off. It's now lunchtime. The room gets loud and my louder friend appears. Don't know. What are you eating today? Wherever. I don't care if it's here at the cafeteria. Alrighty then. Let's have some bread. If we're here, Senpai might come. I'll go buy some. Any requests? As long as it's not curry bread, anything's fine. Oh, and some milk. Roger. Arihiko walks out of the classroom happily. Here you go. Two curry breads and some milk. You, 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 you. Oh my goodness. You, Sanosuke. Was that his name? Sanosuke from Samurai X. You, Sanosuke, wanna be bird chest. Button up your shirt. Nobody wants to see your hairless chest. You got no muscle right here. You over here bringing me curry bread. I said no curry bread. Why are you bringing me curry bread? You, oh my goodness. He in the me on pose. Why are you hitting the me on pose? He think he me on Sanazaki. Thanks for waiting. I told him anything but curry bread. But I guess that had the opposite effect. I thank him and toss him some racks. <laughs> some racks? <laughs> yes, throw him some racks for two curry breads and milk. I started to chew on my curry bread. Hey, Tono, did Senpai come? Nah. Dang! Maybe she's in the cafeteria today. Arihiko, she won't come anymore. What? Did you get in a fight with her? That's not it, but she doesn't like me anymore. Sorry. If you see her, tell her I'm sorry. I do feel it now that I mention it. I hurt her badly. She won't come see me ever again. What's this, Tono? Are you telling me sorry for asking her, for asking her out without asking me? If that's the case, if that's the, if that was the case, I'd be much better. Yeah, if it was sorry or goodbye, there would be some hope left. Certainly. I think that was a pretty bad thing to say, but I'll just disappear. That's too much, right, Arihiko? I say this and put my head down on my desk. Classes are over. It's a Wednesday, so the rest of my classmates run out of the room as soon as the class is in. It's a Wednesday like any other, but I don't feel like doing anything. Even if I went to the tea ceremony room, she probably wouldn't be there. As lifeless as the dead, I go back to the mansion. Welcome back, Shiki. Hisui greets me as soon as I get back to the mansion. Even though Hisui was waiting for me this whole time, I couldn't even bring myself to greet her and I make my way to my room. After dinner, I return to my room. I am burning in here! There's still some time before I'm supposed to meet Arakai. Please don't say stupid things. Tony, you're just a normal boy. You shouldn't do such dangerous things. She was just worrying about me. In the end, is it just that I chose Arakai over Senpai? Why don't you understand your own feelings, Shiki? I ask my reflection in the window glass. And then Arakai pulls up and like just eats me whole, like, do like doesn't even chew at all. <sighs> my light headache returns. Recently, I've been having more headaches. Up until now, the effects of my anemia has only been dizziness. It probably changed to these headaches because I started taking off my glasses and seeing death. It's time. It's the time I promised to meet Arakai. No matter what Senpai said, I have to keep my promise I made. Putting my knife in my pocket, I exit my room. 
I'd go outside. There were never many people around the mansion to begin with, but because of all these serial killings, it is unnaturally quiet. It's not even 10 o'clock yet, but the emptiness makes it, feels, makes it feel more like past 1 o'clock. <sighs> it's well into October and the wind is starting to blow colder. Fall is nearly over as well. I walk down the end of the street holding the sentimental thoughts. I make my way around the mansion wall. Past here and down the hill is, is the park where Arakite is waiting. And then I see a black figure leaning on the mansion wall. A woman clothed in black stands not to block my way, but just to watch me go by. Where are you going this late at night? She doesn't even look in my face as she says it without the slightest inflection in her voice. Senpai. I froze dead in my tracks. I can't look at her face either. I feel uneasy about what happened this morning, so I can't bring myself to directly look at it. Even after all, even after I said all that, you're still going to see it, Tono? Can't be helped. I can't leave her alone, and I can't ignore the vampire in the city either. I see, you've got a good point there. I mean, you've got a point there. She closes her eyes, her mouth. I pass her figure on the wall. Sorry, senpai, about a lot of things. Please, don't worry. You weren't mistaken. I hear her voice behind me. Doesn't seem like she intends to stop me from seeing Arakai at all. I guess Senpai's completely given up on me. Well then, I'll be going. Yes, please do as you like, Tano. I can still only hear her voice. Yet I walk away from the mansion without even turning around. Tap, 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 tap. The footsteps echo in the night along the residential street. Tap, 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 tap. The footsteps echo in the night along the residential street. They aren't the footsteps of a heavy man, but of a much lighter body. In addition, I'm wearing sneakers so they don't make such sounds. Only shoes with a hard bottom can make this sound. For example, shoes like high lace boots. Actually, I don't think I even need to give an example. Without a doubt, those footsteps belong to high lace boots. I stop. The footsteps cease at the same time. This isn't any good. If I just ignore her like this, we'll reach the park soon. I should just go out and say it. I turn around. Hey, senpai. Yes. Is your house this way? No, it is the complete opposite direction. You went there once, Tono. Did you forget already? No, I remember. I just didn't have that much confidence in my memory. You should because my house is that way. Oh, that's right, I say with a smile. Yes, it is, she says, returning my smile. Well then, I'm going this way. Yes, please, do as you wish, Tana. <laughs> Still smiling, she seems to be seeing me off. <laughs> but for some reason, I have an incredibly bad feeling about this. I suck in a deep breath. What's wrong, aren't you going? Senpai asks. And that is that I dash down the street. <laughs> I start to pant heavily, this far. Running full strength this far, she couldn't have followed Tano. Going wild like that is dangerous, you know? A hand pats my shoulder from behind. Oh! I instinctively jump back. Senpai stands behind me as if it was perfectly natural to do so. But why are you following me? Well, I feel uneasy leaving you by yourself. She speaks very matter-of-factly. Uh, I don't even know how to respond. How should we say it? I, I assume we should say it calmly. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be mean to her anymore. I never wanted to be mean. Let's just say it calmly. Wait a minute. Senpai, did it just say I could do as I wish? Yes, please, do as you wish, Tono. Senpai nods and smiles. <laughs> Good, I wasn't just imagining it. Then this is goodbye. You shouldn't be following me anymore. Huh? I'm not really following you or anything. Senpai. I simply have something to do in the park. I don't know where you're going, Tano, but if you're not going to the park, then this is where we say goodbye. You're not funny. <laughs> I see. Certainly, I don't really have the right to say anything about that. I don't have the right, but... 
Look, just don't go. Arukai is in the park. You know how she detests you, right? So I can't let the two of you meet. Oh, are you worried about me? Of course I don't want to see the two of you fight. I'm begging you, please, just go back. Oh, I see. You're not worried about me, but you're worried about her, right? Looking off into the distance, she completely ignores what I say. For some reason, it seems she's doing all of this intentionally because she enjoys teasing me. Senpai, don't tell me you're still carrying a grudge from this morning. She just smiles and doesn't say anything. She's angry. That face is unmistakably carrying a grudge. I get it. Everything this morning was completely my fault. I'm sorry. So, if you tell me to go back because of that, I'll beat the fuck out of you, Tono. Huh? Oh, Tono. We're still fighting right now. It seems I'm still angry, so it isn't easy to just talk calmly. Senpai. If you went back, we can make up, but I know that's impossible. So this conversation is meaningless. There's no need for you to apologize. I'm not concerned what happened this morning. She looks at me with those eyes devoid of any emotion. My duty is to hunt down vampires. Anything else is trivial. Senpai walks into the park. Hey, Senpai. She crosses through the park. As expected, she's headed right towards where Arakite is waiting. Wait a minute. Why are you so angry? I'm not angry. How about yourself? If you come with me, won't you misunderstand things? Misunderstand? Misunderstand what? Don't you like her? And I don't think you should be with me, someone who's her enemy. What? It's not like I like her. I can't say for sure, though. I don't know for sure what I truly feel, but I'm sure I am, but I'm sure I am attracted to her. You really can't lie even to yourself, can you? I think you're far too honest. For a brief instant, her mask reveals a sigh. But it really is better if we separate here. We are no longer friends, and if Arakai were to see us... Hmm? What would happen, Seal? We both turn around towards the voice behind us. There we see Arakai, who seems to be in a particularly bad mood. How surprising. I came here because I heard Shiki's voice and find you here. Didn't we already share information yesterday? I don't believe you have anything I don't believe you have anything to do with me anymore. Yes, I don't have anything to do with you anymore. I was just pointing things out to him. Oh really? You intend on stealing my partner? That sounds good too. I still owe you for that one injury you gave me. The situation is critical between the two of them. As the one standing between them, I can't just watch. Looking at this problem, our relative locations are Senpai, me, then Arukai. When the two of them fight, I'm right in the middle of it. You two, what, come on, why are you glaring at each other? Come on. Your goal is the same, so calm down and be quiet, Shiki. Please be quiet, Tono. I failed. I tried to talk to them, but it doesn't seem to have worked. Fine! Oh, what is it? Fine, Shiki seems to care for you, so I'll let you go. I won't attack you, so just disappear. That's surprising. Is he that important to you? I didn't think Arakai Brunsta could be concerned with anything other than killing vampires. For you, controlling humans comes easily. It'll be better for you if you just make him your servant. If you wanted help, Arukai, but well, why haven't you done that? Don't joke about such things. Shiki is my partner. Even if I don't do that, he still says he'll help me. Arukai looks away uneasily. That murderous intent seems to have disappeared. Arukai, don't tell me you. You. You really want to suck his blood. Clean. From Senpai's direction, I hear the sound of solid metal. I see. I was surprised you were interested in humans, but that does not really matter. If you desire the blood of humans, then there is only one thing to do. Clean. The sound springs forth from her hand. Numerous swords, like long nails, are there. Hey, Senpai! Tono, please, back away! Just now, I have confirmed that she is truly a vampire. 
Even if she's a true ancestor that cooperates with the church, once she desires blood, she becomes our enemy. Before any victims appear, I'll terminate her here. You really do speak nonsense when people do not answer you, Seal. Very well, if you want to die, then I'll grant your wish and kill you. It's not often I get to kill the same person twice. Her eyes flare with intent to kill. Senpai receives Arakai's stare in her fighting stance. Swords at the ready, freezing. The air feels like it's freezing and I can hardly breathe. This isn't good. They really will kill each other like this. Wait, you two, please. I said, calm down. Ignoring the tension in the air, I yell out. For an instant, they both stop. After that, the sound of two feet kick in the earth. My shot must have triggered the start. The white and black figures crash into each other, as if they were two magnets of opposite polarity. The fight between the two of them is beyond me. Arakai's body movement isn't something I can track with my eyes. All I can see is a white blur running through the night. What's surprising is that Senpai does not even back off seeing Arakai's speed. It's not like Senpai moves with Arakai's amazing speed but she accurately deflects Arakai's blazing attacks while standing on the ground. As the third person looking on, their strengths are equal. However, just like Senpai said, Arakai's power seems limitless. No matter how amazing Senpai is, her power is not something that goes beyond a certain point. In contrast, Arakai seems limitless. In the beginning, Senpai was overwhelming her, but Arakai matches her quickly and is now easily surpassing her powers. The fight is quickly decided. Senpai's body flies lightly on the air and strikes, a, strikes the ground rolling like a piece of trash. Senpai lets out a cry and stands up, but that is a useless thing to do. Senpai's body seems to be shot out by an invisible cannon and flies into the air once more and hits the ground. She lies there not moving. Blood flows along the park's brick pathway. Senpai! There's no response. She seems unconscious. Arokai runs towards her without any mercy, with terrible eyes, seemingly bent on slicing Senpai's neck. Ah, I can't speak. There can be no mistake that Arokai intends to kill her, and Senpai can't defend herself. I can't, I can't allow that. Stop it, you stupid idiot! I frantically run towards Senpai. Arokai suddenly stops in front of her. Shiki! Arakai's murderous intent instantly vanishes as she returns to her original look. She seems completely taken aback that I was protecting Senpai. Why are you taken aback by that? That's my friend! Of course I'm gonna protect her! Look, can't, can't we all love each other and just have a three- Why? How come you're protecting her? Didn't I say it earlier? She's a dear person to me. Even if it's you, I won't allow you to go on. I tighten the grip on, on the knife in my pocket and glare at Arakai. Shiki, you. Her eyes are bathed again with hostility. Step aside and I'll forgive you this time. Now. Stop defending her and don't wield that knife. Don't wield that knife against me. Her crimson, her crimson eyes waver like burning candles. Her intent to kill is about to be directed towards me instead of Senpai. I gulp. My mind is warning me that it's over if I don't step aside at once. But even still, I can't. I won't pull back until you say you won't do anything to Senpai. Step aside, Shiki. No, you step aside, Arakai. Didn't you tell me that you don't kill humans? Or is that just a lie? No, I don't kill humans. But I honor those who surpass human capacity. So I don't mind killing them as long as, it, as, long as something that is... I don't mind killing them as something that is my equal, such as you or that woman there. A step. Arakai comes closer. I see. You're wielding that knife against me again. Another step. She draws closer. I forgave you the first time, but I don't think I can forgive you a second time. In the first place, I don't think I can be hurt with your knife, even with your mystic eyes of death perception. You shouldn't be able to even see my death right now. From directly in front of me, her golden eyes enter my vision. Ah. My heart feels like it stops. 
A chill races up my spine. This crushing despair that feels like everything is bearing down on me is far greater than anything during my fight with Nizd. I can't do anything. This is what it means to fight Arakai. Wow, that is creepy. Shiki, this is your last chance. While I can still think, get back. I don't want to lose the first person I've liked just because of that woman. The chills collect in my neck. Arakai is in the perfect position to kill me. If that arm moves, she can rip off my neck before I could use my knife. Even still, this is wrong. Why? Why? I just don't understand, Arakai. Why are you such a horrible person only to Senpai? I know you're not the most aware of moral principles, but you're not one to speak about killing people so easily. Shiki. Arakai's hostility starts to lessen. She walks away from the both of us. I see. If you support her this much, then I don't know you. Arakai! Just be careful, Shiki. That woman you're protecting, she isn't the person you think she is. What, what are you saying? You can be tricked and get your blood sucked by her. So long. Don't come crying back to me. Arakai walks away without even looking back. The only ones left are me and the wounded collapsed senpai. What was she saying such stupid things? Senpai would suck my blood? What a ridiculous lie. That sounds like senpai's a vampire or something. Saying that, I laugh aloud, because that is impossible. Senpai walks around during the day. Well, Arakai is also a vampire that walks around at daytime, but even she gets weak then. But for Senpai, she doesn't change whether it's night or day. First of all, isn't Senpai a member of the church? It's contradicting for a vampire to be in an organization whose purpose is to terminate vampires. More importantly, Senpai. I turn around to check on Senpai. The ground was soaked in blood, so I have to get her to a hospital. Huh? The blood has disappeared. The black robes that were painted red with flowing blood are now spotless. Senpai stands up as if nothing even happened and she looks completely unharmed. Senpai, what's going on? Tono, why did you protect me? Didn't you know that she really almost killed you? Her eyes have no emotion whatsoever. With those vacant eyes, like a lifeless doll, she doesn't even hear my question. You ask why, because you are going to die. Anyone would do the same thing in that situation. Even if it means getting yourself killed. Tono, dedication isn't throwing away your life. Giving up your life to save others isn't dedication or sacrifice, it's just self-love. What? What? Her voice is very stern. She admonishes me severely. You only did that so you would not regret it later. And you're satisfied with just that. To be blunt, it is very troublesome for me. Idealism is a fine thing, but please don't involve me in your selfish justice. What are you talking about? I just didn't want you to die. Are, are you saying that's troublesome? Are you saying it would be all right if Arakai killed you like that? Yes. It is my life, so it has nothing to do with you. It's too miserable being allowed to live because of the mercy of a vampire. He a better man than me, because I would have slapped the shit out of her. Like, dead ass, I would have slapped the fuck out of her. I'm pissed. Partly because she rejected me even after I protected her. But more than that... Don't be fucking stupid! What do you think your life is? Don't you see? If you die, it's all over. No matter what horrible, awful things you've done. If you don't keep on living, you will all have been a lie. You have to keep on living. You have to keep on living because there's nothing else. So what if you're miserable? That's far, far better than not being able to feel that at all. That's right. You're someone who tasted death eight years ago. That's why you, 
can be content with such a simple way of thinking. Her eyes are completely vacant. She speaks without looking at me, like she can't even see herself. How happy you must be. I cannot say such words. She steps back as she speaks. Tono, what she said before is true. But why, why are you even saying? Like Arukai said, I cannot be called a human. Didn't you see it, Tono? All the blood would spill, disappear like it was never there. That, it's fine. I am a monster. I am not a vampire, but my body is, it isn't that of a normal human. Senpai looks down as she speaks. What are you saying? Not a body like a human's. You, see, you seem normal to me? Even if it's like this? Senpai slowly takes her sword and places it on her neck. Huh? Senpai? I don't even have time to stop her. With a clean sound, it slices into her neck. Splat. As if painting my very eyes, fresh blood sprays everywhere. Drip. Drip. Drip, 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 drip. Drip, drip, drip. It's beautiful. Captivating my vision, even my whole consciousness. The blood seeps into her black garments. Underneath her robes, Senpai's white skin is probably mixed with those beautiful crimson lines. A drop of blood flies forth and lands on my finger. It releases me from my momentary captivity and returns me to reality. Before me is Senpai's blood-soaked figure. Senpai! I quickly dash towards her. There's no need to panic. See, look at it. She stops me and points to her neck. The wound is already gone, and all the blood that was there before vanished too. Like a video being rewound, everything returned to the way it was before. That was strange. And something like the word rewound truly describes it. Not healing or regeneration. I can't speak. After seeing that, I'm not crazy enough to tell her that she's still normal. That's how it is. If I could have helped it, I didn't want you to know, Tono. Senpai gives a sad smile. I don't know what to say. Just like you said, Tono, I was deceiving you this whole time, so it can't be helped if you get angry at me. Mm. But I can't blame her. Something like that, even I wanted her to hide it from me forever. I wanted her to stay the same old senpai. But I do not regret what happened this morning. I was really... But I do not regret what happened... Which, I do not regret what happened this morning. I was really happy when you said it was a fun time together and that you wanted to protect me if you could. Senpai. But those were really peaceful times I wanted to last forever. Farewell. To the very end, she gives a perpetual smile and disappears before my very eyes. My mind is in complete disarray. I can't follow after her. Arakai said that Senpai was a vampire. Senpai didn't deny it and even showed me proof. And after saying farewell, she vanished. Even if it was a lie. Even if it was a lie that could be easily seen that could easily be seen through. If she simply said it wasn't so, things would have been fine. I can't forget her sad face. Senpai, who is that good of a person? Just an upperclassman at my school. I didn't want to know she was such a different person. Farewell, her last words. I don't need to think about what it meant. I knew about her and I even hurt her, but still she came to see me, but that's all over. I don't want to believe that I'll never see her again. No, this isn't happening. My head doesn't seem to be working. It's just in shock. It's so shocked that it can't tell why it's in shock. I leave the park with my uncertain memories and faltering steps. Throb. 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 I'm incredibly exhausted. This headache is killing me. More than anything else, without thinking about Senpai or Arakite or anything at all, I just want to go to sleep.
Well, that's depressing. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll read them all, tap into the next one. Okay, man. Okay, that's crazy. So, Seal is a vampire, and she's been hiding that shit from us. I've got to say, Arokai is extremely stupid, and Seal is extremely racist, and Shiki is extremely stupid. So all these things, to, all these three things together, makes it so impossible for Shiki to just say, to, to, to convince them not to fight each other. Cause like you know, if Shield was just a little less racist, if if Arakai was just a little less stupid, and Shiki was just a little smarter and better with words, he could have convinced him not to fight. I'm sure he could have. I'm sure he could have said something that would convince him not to fight. But you know. That's just how the world works out, you know? That's just how the world works out. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, I'll read them all, tap into the next one. Uh, by the time y'all, oh, shit. I'ma uh, I'm start focusing on Tsukihime now so I can get these uploaded. I think I wanna upload them, maybe not before Umi Neko, but probably while I'm uploading Umi Neko, if possible. Or, Honestly, I could just upload these now. I don't really the main reason why I'm recording and editing everything before I do thumbnails It the really, reason I'm recording everything before I edit is to avoid spoilers when I make my thumbnails, but Honestly, I'm making the I make I make the thumbnails out of the um, what you call it? It's this the sprites in in the video like the stuff I see in video So I don't got to worry about spoilers. So I'll just upload this as I go. You know, that's fine but peace out. I love y'all. Type into the next one.